Hi, everybody. We are through two days of the 2021 NFL Draft. John Schmelk, Paul Dottino with you. The Giants coming away with three players in the first round. They draft Kadarius Tony, the wide receiver. The second round, Aziz Ojolari, edge rusher out of Georgia. And then in the third round, Aaron Robinson, a cornerback out of UCF. So, Paul, still have a couple of sixth-round picks to go. The Giants' fifth-round pick they got from the Bears in that first-round trade back got sent out in a third round trade up. So just those two sixth round picks and the Giants fourth round pick coming your way on Saturday afternoon. So let's take a look at the guys that are still left on the board, Paul. And let's start on the offensive line. We'll start inside first. A couple of straight up guards, a couple of real big fellas, Deontay Brown and Trey Smith still there for the Giants. Well, John, Dave Gettleman has already said that the Giants did look at a guard in the second round and the third round, had some guys picked out, but they wound up getting taken before the Giants' turns came up. So you'd have to believe they are certainly going to see if they can unearth one here on day three. Brown, of course, is a load out of Alabama. This is a guy who goes about 345 pounds. He has had weight fluctuation, which is why he has dropped to this point. But there's no question, he is a powerful mauler and a massive run blocker on the inside. Maybe not as athletic as you'd like because he's so big, but he's a guy who's coming from that Nick Saban program. You'd have to believe he will get some consideration. Yeah, and Trey Smith, the Mauler, two out of Tennessee, just a really large guy. He was at the Senior Bowl as well, played well there. If you want to cross over, Paul, maybe a guy that can play guard and also give you some snaps at tackle, East Carolina, Deontay Smith. And also, you want to look at James Hudson, a Michigan transfer that finished his career at Cincinnati. Two guys that played tackle in college but could move into guard at the NFL level. Yeah, th that's very true, John. And, and we're getting now to the very fringe of I think the guys who have an opportunity to maybe compete for a starting job. And as you said, we're talking about guys who don't necessarily have the traits and the athleticism and the length to necessarily be on the edge to stop edge rushers at the NFL level. But that's one of the reasons why that people think they can transfer into the guard spot. For example, Hudson, 6'5", 315, sets pretty well. A little bit of a bullier, but the bottom line for him is that only a one-year starter. So not a ton of NCAA experience. This is why a guy like him drops, especially if you're going to project him to move to a different position. You're, you're really going to have to put a lot of faith in what you think you see. All right, let's go to the running back position, Paul. Stick on offense. Two guys that at least I'm pretty surprised they're still there. Kenneth Gainwell, who was an opt-out out of Memphis. And then Michael Carter out of North Carolina, guy I thought was going to be a third-round pick. His teammate, Javante Williams, was the first running back off the board in round number two. He was electric at the Senior Bowl down in Alabama. You know, running back is a very fruitful position, John. We know the Giants could use somebody to add some depth, and there's no question. These two guys will play in the league, and they will do some really good things. Uh, let's talk about Gainwell first. He's got hands, vision, got a burst, quicks, even has the ability to play some slot receiver and even out wide as a receiver out by the boundary. Very versatile player. Carter? Well, you talked about Williams, his North Carolina uh, cohort who was already drafted, but Carter's got a motor, quicks, gear, uh, hands. This is a productive player, and you have to feel that uh, people will be looking at these guys now as we get to the third day of the draft. All right, very quickly, Paul, defensive side of the ball. Uh, two spots. We're going to leave edge out since the Giants selected an edge rusher already in round number two of the draft. If they want to replace Dalvin Tomlinson, there are some big body defensive tackles still left. And then Jabril Cox, who's a good coverage linebacker out of LSU that could fit next to Blake Martinez. Well, when you talk about Cox, I think he's a 4-3 inside uh, backer. Uh, I, I'm not so sure exactly how he would fit the Giants scheme, but he's a really good player. I think a lot of people expected him to be gone on the second day. So let me make that very clear. And also from the SEC, by the way, you got to keep mentioning that conference. Jake DeFelli out of USC, to me, is the best defensive tackle left on the board. And I think by some people's imagination, he can play both in a 4-3 and a 3-4 front. I wrote down that he has power, he anchors, He's athletic. He can shed blocks. Doesn't necessarily have all the instincts and the intangibles, but physically, he's got a lot of tools that can help a team. Paul, good stuff, my friend. 
Folks, make sure you tune in to Big Blue Kickoff Live for our live coverage of day three of the draft starting at 10 a.m. on Saturday morning. For Paul Dottino, I'm John Schmelk. Thanks for being with us. Enjoy the rest of the draft.